17 run. As we take a look at Queen starters, Ferrell, Holes, and Oladipo are the guards, and the front court featuring Wofford and Cody Zeller, the consensus preseason national player of the year. Meantime for Butler, Barlow, and Clark at the guards, and the front line headlined by Smith, Kyle Marshall, and Roosevelt Jones. Brad Stevens, the sixth year head coach, he's become a rock star. Those back to back runner up campaigns 2010 2011. And now trying to get this program back to the NCAA tournament. Our officials, Mike Kitts, Brian Dorsey, and Larry Scarada here in Indianapolis. Andrew Smith and Zeller jump. And we are underway. A record setting crowd here at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. Not a seat to be had. In the best basketball venue, in my opinion, in the country. Bankers Life Fieldhouse, a terrific environment here. And you look at Butler, really want to make sure they're in their gaps defensively, Spiro. By that being, by that I mean being in line with the basketball. An outstanding rebounding team. Want to make sure that Indiana only gets one shot as well. This is Rodney Clark, the transfer from Arkansas. Sat out all of last season and quickly becoming the heartbeat of this Butler team. Jones lobbing a bit too high underneath for Smith. He was open too, Spiro. Well executed other than the pass. Oh, the depot called for traveling. Take a look at how Butler is keeping a body on Cody Zeller. That's Roosevelt Jones. And staying in front of him, trying to keep a couple of guys near him to keep body contact. So he doesn't have an opportunity to operate in space. Jones is Brad Stevens' best defender. And you can figure Butler will show Zeller multiple looks today defensively. Clark chased around the perimeter. This is Kyle Marshall. Expected to have a big, big year for the Bulldogs. He operates pretty much 15 feet and in, does Kyle Marshall. Smith wants to take Zeller, elevating well short. Ball did not draw iron, and it's out of bounds. Marshall unable to save, and the Hoosiers get it back. There's Brad Stevens. Well, last year, a down year, and that in quotation marks when you consider the lofty heights and standards that he had built back in 2010 and 2011. 22 wins. Failed to make it to the big dance as Oladipo misfires. Still looking for his first points here. With 90 seconds gone by. A Butler has been here before taking on top-ranked teams in their history yet to break through with that win. Well, they had to deal with some tough players in those first two games. Cassie <laughs> Russell <laughs> in that first one, and Mark Aguirre was at the call during that time in 1980. Can't overstate how big a game this is here in Indianapolis and certainly nationally, but this place packed to capacity. Here's Wofford inside, going glass, and finally we get our first points. Live ball turnovers against Indiana are lethal because anybody who gets a turnover can take it the distance. And they run extremely well at every position, so you've got to take care of the ball if you're Butler. Andrew Smith not quite a threat from that distance. Again, backs down Zeller. With tip by Marshall underneath, and here comes Farrell. Look how quickly they race to pace. Oh, the depot getting to the center of the paint. That's the look he wanted, but the rebound taken by Smith. So Butler still looking for its first points. 240 gone by. And look at the attention that Rodney Clark is garnering. Understandably so. Well over 40% from behind the three-point line, and that's what Roosevelt Jones can do. He's a terrific facilitator and plays with excellent strength and control. Turnover, good active hands, Jordan Halls, and then look how the Hoosiers get out. All the depot and Watford are the guys who got out with Halls, and that gave them options, and Watford was his choice. Nice find inside, Jones to Marshall for the lefty layup. Marshall, the junior out of Davie, Florida. And that breakout game against Marquette at the Maui Invitational. With 24 points and nine boards for Brad Stevens. This is the Ferrell baseline. Indiana a bit cold at the start. 
And we are tied at two with just under 17 minutes left in the half. Marshall feeling comfortable. And the shot clock resets. Butler wants to control the pace. They're not averse to running, but they're going to be very selective. They'd much rather play in the half court, space Indiana out, be solid with their screening, and then try to attack on the dribble just like that. Roosevelt Jones switching hands in midair, and Butler with its first lead. Spiro, he's a low. He's like a hummer with hands and feet. That's how strongly built he is. And he, he plays through contact very well. Indiana trying to fight through some offensive pursuits. Oh! One of five. Nice pick and roll set up. Oladipo to Zeller. And the National Player of the Year will shoot a free throw. Take a look. Good screen right here. And then right in there for the easy layup. Well done. A big on a small on big screen. Marshall actually was challenged because he didn't catch it cleanly. But well executed by Butler on the baseline out of bounds. And here's Roosevelt Jones going to the hoop through contact. And Zeller, pick and roll, finish, and he'll shoot a free throw when we come back. Squared up and four. The lines keep moving in terms of conference realignment, and it's just the nature of where we are right now, Spiro. I don't necessarily agree with it all, but certainly understand that change is inevitable, and Money is clearly a driver, and we'll see where we land, but I think the bricks are going to continue to shift for a little while longer. So here's Zeller at the free throw line, just under 16 minutes to play in his first half. If there's one chink in his armor, and talking about Cody Zeller, it would be his free throw percentage. He was 75% a year ago, and he's right at 65 so far this season. Doesn't sound like a huge difference, but that's probably two points a game for how much he gets to the foul line. Roosevelt Jones, the southpaw, kind of stumbled for a moment. Still 13 to shoot. Smith launches a three, and he puts it in. Andrew Smith with just his fourth three of the season, and it's 7-4 Butler. He's capable there. You look at his technique and his mechanics. He's got good form and good range. So he's capable. He's a much better shooter than what his percentage has shown from behind the arc so far this season. This is Jordan Hall. He's among the most lethal shooters in the country. Offensive rebound by Will Sheehy, who's come in. And the junior will step to the free throw line. And based on what you said, Spiro, Smith has only made a handful of threes. And Cody Zeller relaxes and backs off a bit. And Smith makes him pay there. And Will Sheehy, he is... He's like a Mophie box, that thing that always keeps your <laughs> iP your um, phone charged. Uh -huh. That's how he is. He's always charged up. Always. I mean, he comes into the building amped up and ready to roll. We watched the Hoosiers practice yesterday, and I was tired just watching him for about 10 minutes. I mean, he was a ball of energy all over the place. Yeah, he's terrific, and he's ideal for coming off the bench because he can inject his team with impactful plays at both ends of the floor in limited playing time. He really is virtually a sixth starter in my mind. Cameron Woods, the sophomore out of Louisville, Kentucky, has come in for Butler. Also Chase DeGaulle, the man handling the senior, shoots a three. Offensive rebound by Jones, already making an impact. Sneaking behind the defense for the little righty scoop. <laughs> he does everything but shoot it well. He makes all kinds of winning plays. Defensively, he's physical, he rebounds, he passes. He actually leads his team in assist. And there he shows you some creativity on the scoop. Uh, yeah. Butler has been well represented here in the arena so far, and they are making themselves heard behind their bench. Rebound by Farrell. Zeller in the open floor. Oh, the depot. And more free throws for the Hoosiers. So far, Butler enjoying the pace they would like to play at here, and this is an offensive rebound by Jones, and then he just slithers between defenders to get it up and down. He's big, strong, quick, and has a real good feel for how to finish around the goal with both hands. Now, we had a chance to visit with Tom Cream, both coaches, yesterday, and Cream told us that Butler was the most physical team that they had to play last year. And that's that's a big statement considering the Big Ten schedule. They you know beat one, they beat two, they beat five. High praise for this Butler team. 
any team that plays against Butler, that's what the coach will say. And what does it mean to be physical? You've got to be disciplined in what you do, understand your principles, and then you've got to be willing to get your body into the opponent for 40 minutes so that they feel you. That's why Butler is physical. They don't look at, they don't look like an overly athletic team, but they understand who they are and what they're doing, and they stick their body and nose into the opposition, especially at the defensive end and boxing out to rebound. Rodney Clark, Butler's leading scorer yet to get going. That time fouled on the perimeter, it's on Wofford, that's his first. Two-point lead for the Bulldogs, 14-0-2 to play. A little back cut by Woods and deflected off of his hands and out of bounds. Oh, you got a sports fan on your holiday gift list. CBSSports.com shop has officially licensed NFL gear and NCAA gear from over 500 schools and three days shipping on every order at shop.cbssports.com. This is Wofford putting it on the deck. There's a case of physicality. Good job by Andrew Smith just to keep his body into Wofford without foul. That's Abel on a little baseline shot. Remy Abel getting the run here early. And IU so far has missed seven of its first nine shots. Well, no real opportunities in transition other than the one that was converted by Watford. Butler has been able to set its half-court defense as Fromm and Jones replaced the goal and Smith for the Bulldogs. So a really solid start. Indiana has to be patient and physical in its cutting and in its screen setting to counteract some of this really solid Butler defense right now. Hall's blanketed, and they leave him in the corner. That's the most space he'll have today. <laughs> you got that right. So Indiana just 2 of 10 at the start, yet only down 2. Well, George showing the versatility, getting out and handling. Here is free out of the three. Good box out that time by Sheehy. Hoosiers trying to get out in the open court, but Butler doing a nice job to get back. Well, Butler not shooting much better, just 4 of 11 so far in a two-point game. Well, if it stays kind of ugly, then Butler enjoys that type of game and can thrive in it. Excellent take by Oladipo. Leads the Big Ten in field goal shooting at 65%. Maybe the hardest working player in college basketball. As he has willed himself and worked himself and a top player for the number one team in the country. Kellen Dunham, the freshman, Brad wanted to travel. Eric Fahm, the junior, 13 to shoot. As Butler tries to find a seat. There's Fahm on a triple. And Butler back in front. Fahm, the junior, local kid out of Bloomington, Indiana. Just his fifth three-pointer of the season. And Sheehy elevating over the defense. First bucket for Sheehy. Sheehy a 57% shooter and really excels in the mid-range game. He's got good size and bounce. So he usually can shoot over just about any of his defenders. And Sheehy comes in with a hot hand shooting over 65% over the last four games. Butler turns it over. Paul's getting his hands dirty on the depot back. And a hard two-handed finish. Well, you touched on it earlier. Any turnover that can get the Hoosiers in the open floor dangerous. And Very. we saw it right there. And this is where Indiana's defense is a little better than it was a year ago. They can get after you defensively. Wofford turning Jones aside. Wofford off target on the three. Oh, deep on a put back, and he's headed to the line. Victor Oladipo electrifying, especially in the open court. Active hands by Halls, and there's Oladipo again. And then he can hurt you on the offensive glass, too. If you don't find him, he'll get up and get that loose ball, and he'll shoot a free throw when we get back. It's a game on average, yet to make one. Butler makes seven and has already made two. 
Victor Oladipo really having an impact here with eight of the 15 Hoosier points. Short on that free throw, but points off turnovers, plus four for Indiana. And then an offensive rebound put back. That's why the Hoosiers are on the lead. Butler has to really minimize those kinds of scoring opportunities for Indiana to be able to pull the upset. So Butler down three here. Eric Fromm staying on the floor. Boy Jones passed Fromm out of a shot. Clark blocked by Oladipo from the back. Every time he's touched it, he's been double teamed. Roosevelt Jones stuffing the stat sheet already. He scored four, he's rebounded five, and he's assisted on three. So nine seconds to shoot here. We find Smith right in the center of the paint. Little shovel pass back to Jones. It's a one-point game. And by the way, that last shot by Rodney Clark, his first attempt, Clark, in nearly 10 minutes. Well, you can put a guy like Oladipo on Clark, who has the athleticism, speed, and size to bother him and really make it tough for him to shake free. There's Jordan Halls averaging a touch under 12 points per game, a senior out of Bloomington. Now, they've always said Halls too short, not quick enough, not athletic enough. What a college career he's had. Whistle blown here against Indiana. Well, it starts with the execution to get the ball in the front of the, in front of the rim, and then a beautiful shovel pass by the by the big man Andrew Smith. And then Jones knows exactly what to do with it. Never put it on the ground. Went right into his defender and softly finished. Second personal called a moment ago on Wofford, so he will sit. Maurice Creech has come into the game. As we approach 10 minutes to play before halftime. And the Hoosiers up three. Clark finding some space. Offensive rebound and a putback stick by Marshall. This Butler club so scrappy. Zeller rolling to the cup. And a foul called underneath on the Bulldogs. We've talked about Indiana getting to the offensive glass, but Marshall doing a nice job of using his lower body and his hands a little bit to get the advantage on that missed shot. He pushed a little, but that hand fighting is part of play in the post area. And Brad Stevens saying that of all his underclassmen, Kyle Marshall may have had the biggest ceiling. And as he continues to come into his own now, the junior out of Davie, Florida, averaging better than 12 points per game. That's the 15 foul, as you see there on Butler. Indiana, one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country. Marcello had a great position, but Smith holding his ground, and Indiana retains possession. Keep an eye on that, folks. Can Butler continue to be physical defensively, rebound its defensive board without fouling to keep the Hoosiers off the foul line? This is really able to inside as Jones just swallowed him up. Rodney Clark still looking for his first points. He's only taken two shots. Shattered by Sheehy. Shot clock resets. He has done it. This is Jordan Halls trying to shake his man Clark. Going glass. And the rebound taken by Butler. They've out-rebounded IU so far 15-6. Both of these teams are outstanding rebounding teams, Spiro. Butler plus seven on the season. Indiana plus 14 on the board. And there's Rodney Clark finally on the board as Butler retakes the lead. Abel kind of pulled the string on it. And Indiana will throw in. Well, if you can't get your shot inside, Shoot it from where nobody is. <laughs> that was deep. You know, there are some guys that have in-the-gym range. There are other guys that have zip code range. Rodney Clark has zip code range. Indiana turns it over. Clark entering the day today. Third in the country in three-pointers made per game. Four mm -hmm. on average. He's shooting 45% from behind the arc as well, Spiro, so he is lethal back there. 
blocked that incredible running three-pointer, and now he to beat Marquette. Good matchup here on the depot. Matched up with Rodney Clark. First time we've seen Jackson Aldridge, the sophomore from Sydney, Australia. Handling here with nine to shoot. Clark shouted by Oladipo with a matchup here. Trying to create space and Oladipo the steal. That was fantastic oh! defense. Excellent defensive play by Aldridge to make Zeller earn it at the free throw line. Excellent call, Spiro. You're right. Two outstanding defensive plays we just saw in this possession. Look at Oladipo sitting down in the stands, maintaining contact, moving his feet, active hands, cleanly taken away. Oh! Aldridge doing a nice job not giving up on the 6'11 Zeller and getting right into the ball. And it paid off. So Zeller's 65% at the free throw line. Well, Tom Crean talked about his signing a couple of years back and how symbolic it was for the program. Because back in the day, you know, when Indiana was a perennial power, they always got the big players from Indiana. That kind of stopped. Yep. Right before his arrival. Well, boy, did that usher in the reemergence of this program. No question about it, Spiro. It's a watershed moment that really was the catalyst for Indiana being back in a big way now. Something tells me you represented yourself well in those YMCA games. Yeah, I had my share of good moments. <laughs> well, what a start here. As this place packed to capacity, record-setting crowd in a history of Bankers Life Fieldhouse. Bowler, 22 wins a year ago, 7-2 this season. Clark dials up the three again. It's saved by Jones, but taken by Farrell. Hoosiers have numbers. Farrell spot up. And Indiana with a one-point lead. I love the way Indiana attacks, and that's who they are. They're going to try to run at every opportunity. Clearly, turnovers give you the best opportunity, but defensive rebounds, and even after makes, they'll try to get that outlet deep and push the ball forward. Keep an eye on, folks, the middle of the court here, the logo that you see. Close the gap, crossroads, classic logo has caused a couple of players to slip. And we'll just see how it plays out, but that might require an adjustment by the officials if it becomes a factor. Shot clock down to three, Jackson Aldridge unable to hit the runner. Offensive rebound by Jones. Lost it. And they say Abel was out of bounds on the baseline, so the Butler Bulldogs will have it with a fresh 35. Both coaches shuffling in players in and out. And both of these Donovan teams will go to back their, in. Excuse me, Cyril. Both of these teams will go to their bench quite a bit. Indiana will play about nine. And Butler will play about nine as well. Nine are averaging double-digit minutes for both of these teams. Well, Indiana, one of the deepest teams in the country, and that depth has been tested. But today, welcoming back two young players. Peter Jerkin and Hannah Mosquera Correa eligible to return for the first time since their nine game suspensions were finally served. Yeah, impermissible benefits is what caused those two nine games. A little dubious as to how that became the case, but a quick cut that time. Nothing dubious about that. That was just good, clean, solid execution. And Cody Zeller showing you his ability to help his teammates get buckets. Three-pointer a bit short from Stegall, the senior. So the Hoosiers have it up three. We come up on six to play before halftime. Well, the depot checked by Dunham. And now Yogi Ferrell will reset. Nice job by Andrew Smith, really trying to body up Zeller. Andrew Smith, the rebound. Oh, it's a big moment for Andrew Smith. You mentioned he's played in the two national championship games. He's played in bigger games, but from an individual standpoint, this is a big moment against Zeller. I agree with you, and he's certainly up to the challenge. Much like Zeller, you watch these two big guys play, Spiro, and you can't tell what's going on in the game by their demeanor. And I like that about both of them. They simply play. They don't let anything bother them or fluster them. They go at you hard. They give you what they have consistently, and you've got to love that. That's a common influence for their respective teams. 
On Monday, Dave's all new with Tom Cruise. Plus later this week, catch Katie Holmes and John Bon Jovi, followed by Craig Ferguson. Only CBS. Spiro Didis, Clark Kellogg, our entire CBS crew from Indianapolis. Indiana, number one in the country, perfect at 9 0. This is Farrell. Smith gave him the shot. Offensive rebound on the deep ball, and he's had a big half going glass to make it a three point game. Ten points for the junior out of Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Roosevelt Jones and look out. Boy, Zeller's going to get right back onto his feet after taking a nasty spill. Roosevelt Jones has had some success off the dribble. There you see him using that tight handle and strong body to get into Sheehy and draw the foul. Good effort by Zeller to get there. But Jones with an opportunity to add to his point total. Well, if you said that Butler would be down only three points, Clark, with five and change left in the first half, despite Rodney Clark shooting one for five. I don't think many people would believe you. Yeah, you're right, but that shows you what this team is about. And the game is a team game. So you need different guys to step up at different times. And Butler's doing it because they've defended pretty well. And other than turnovers, have not really allowed open court scoring opportunities for Indiana. They come up empty on that trip with the line. Fellows pass for Zeller, snatched out of midair by Jones. Clark taking Sheehy into the paint. Now Jones spinning between two and Zeller pinned it on the glass. Smith is there as he picks up the loose change and makes it a one-point game. Well, when Zeller left to block the shot, that left Smith loose on the glass. And he chased down the pumpkin. And Butler fighting hard. Beautifully done by Zeller. He knows he needs to make that one. When you catch it that deep. You got to finish those. Beautiful block here by Zeller, but because he had left Andrew Smith, nobody helped him with the box out. And as a result, Smith able to get that loose ball. Good activity both ways, boy. Second personal on Andrew Smith. It's a huge call against Butler, and Zeller continues to struggle at the line. Clark, give us the blog on Zeller. Well, just plays. I just mentioned that both he and Andrew Smith, relentless rim runner. Although he's not had much success getting anything, I think he's got to live large. In other words, I think he's got to play bigger. He's really even keel, unassuming, but I think he's got to play a little bigger consistently, and then he's got to assert himself, I think, a little more because he commands his game and his skill level command that type of attitude. And Brad Stevens told us yesterday, he's watched Zeller since he was in fifth grade. Guy who has been so unselfish and said, really, you know, the jury's still out on whether you need to double Zeller as an offensive player. As she spots up in the corner. Zeller had it, his first rebound today. They find Farrell for the three. And Indiana with a five point lead. Farrell, the freshman, a local kid out of Indianapolis, won two state high school championships in this building. And returning here for the first time since that big moment. Biggest lead for the Hoosiers here. Danger zone for Indiana, for um, Butler. You need to get a good shot. Marshall, tough lefty bank over Zeller. Dunham finds him back inside for the two-handed flush. That's a big basket, Spiro. This place was starting to get energized. Indiana put together a couple of consecutive hoops. Huge basket for Butler. And how about that shot? Zeller on a turn fade. And Indiana's lead back to five. These Hoosiers have so many different players that can make shots and make plays to beat you. Six points for Zeller. Clark answers with a triple. Farrell going right to the rack as Butler with a rare defensive breakdown. Well, all of that was Yogi Farrell, I think. Clearly, Butler was a little slow getting back, but 
My, he really did a nice job attacking that seam and quickly. And Farrell, that huge moment in the overtime win over Georgetown, a game that they struggled to win early in the season at that big, big three to seal it in overtime. Offensive rebound from, shot clock resets. Here's Clark, running Oladipo ragged, from on a put back over Zeller. Tell you what, we talked about Indiana's off. Both of these teams average about 13 offensive rebounds a game, so they attack that offensive glass well. And Butler doing a nice job the last five minutes converting. That's not the shot that Yogi Ferrell should be looking to take on a regular basis. Now Clark, you wonder if Butler can maintain this kind of pace. Not sure they want to play at this kind of speed. But you have to take your opportunities as they avail themselves, Spiro. And I think they're capable of doing it because they're good enough defensively and they've got shot making, particularly at the three-point line. Clark thought he was fouled. Here comes Farrell, the speedy point guard. Great job getting back. And Sheehy fires a three and sticks it. We might not get to the under four minute break. <laughs> <laughs> this one's being played on roller skates. A briskly moving first half. This border war between the Hoosiers and Bulldogs from Butler. Separated by just 56 miles. Marshall absorbing contact and a traveling violation call. Eighth Butler turnover as Indiana's lead now at five. Victor Oladipo, the catalyst in the early going for Tom Green's Hoosiers. First half, you see the points off turnover is one of the big stories so far. That is the story. I mean, that's the difference in the ball game. Butler needs to finish this last 55 seconds well, maintain contact, and then regroup. Okay, Indiana, just, sorry, Indiana but, doing a nice job because of its explosive nature. Trying to create a little separation, and we see Hunter Perea out there for the first time for Indiana. Hunter Mosquera Perea suspended the first nine games, making his Indiana debut. And boy, he just looks like an athlete. Clark. <laughs> he does. 6'8, 225 pounds, not an ounce of fat on him. No, long and lean, and he's packed like a box of fried rice. <laughs> he's tight. Well, there he is. He had been dealing with a foot injury, but practicing the last two and a half weeks, finally making his first appearance for Tom Crean today. They like his length, his athleticism. They think he'll rebound at a high level immediately as he gets some game reps under his belt. You know, practice is one thing, but the meter goes up about 20% when you get in front of 17, 18,000 people and it's live game action. And there's only one way to get acclimated to that and that's to be in the mix. Well, they say he can dunk on a 12-foot rim, so I'm not sure he <laughs> needs the extra juice. <laughs> Zabel steps up, hits two big free throws. Indiana, if you've just joined, has started the game shooting 7 of 20 from the field. They've hit 7 of their last 11, and now taking their biggest lead of the day. Butler wants to max this clock out and try to make this the final shot and possession of the half. About a three-second differential. I think they need to milk it so that at the very least, it's a, at the very worst, it's a seven-point deficit. Shot clock at 13. Tripped up. Did Marshall on the play. Clark has it for the shoot. Clark surrounded in the corner. And a huge wow. call on Indiana wow. to bail out Butler. Boy, I tell you, that was pretty good defense by Indiana, I thought. Let's take another look at it. Good activity, good closeout, good ball pressure. Um, can't see anything from there, but that doesn't mean there wasn't a smack or a hit. But good activity by Indiana. Now definitely Butler. No shot clock in play here. And this is where Brad Stevens excels as a coach. He's excellent with his out-of-bounds play calls and diagramming.